The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Fathers and mothers of America, upon the training you give your children depends the future of America. Our system of free enterprise, personal liberty, and democracy cannot exist without educated and enlightened citizens. In about 14 minutes, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have some helpful suggestions for parents. If you wish to equip your children to take advantage of all the opportunities the future offers, don't miss this important message. Tonight's FBI file... The Night of Terror. This is 1946, the second year of the atomic age. And in almost every field of endeavor... Man is breaking through new frontiers. But there is one field in which man has not changed his ways. The field of crime. Since the incident of the apple, there have been certain men who could not resist temptation. The temptation to advance themselves at the direct expense of the rest of society. Those men we call criminals. And those men down through the ages have committed the same crime. Crimes ranging from robbery to murder. Tonight's file opens at a summer resort located on the shore of a lake near a large eastern city. In one of the cottages overlooking this lake, Two girls who work in the city are spending a hard-earned vacation. It is evening. One of the girls, Ann Madison, is dressing to go out. She calls to her friend. Ruthie. Yeah, honey? Do you mind if I wear your gold earrings? No, go ahead. Oh, thanks. What time is it? Uh, just 8.30. Oh, good. Hey, come on in here. Let's see how you look. Okay. Okay. Well? Well, you look lovely. (laughs) Oh, thanks. In fact, you look so lovely, I hate to see it wasted. Uh, What do you mean? You know what I mean, Anne. That guy you're going out with. Oh, now, don't start that again, Ruthie. You don't even know Al. Hmm. I know his reputation. Oh, Ruth. Look, I got the whole story on him the other night. I know, I know. He's a racketeer. He's no good. You told me all that. Well, doesn't that matter? Look, Ruth. I spend 50 weeks a year slaving in an office. My dates are usually a friend of my brother's or the boy next door. So? So this is a vacation. Two short weeks away from that endless, dull routine. I'm going to make the most of it. Hmm. With Al. Yes, with Al. It's fun to be with him. Exciting. Oh, sure, sure. We go to the best places. Everybody knows him. We get the best table. And listen to me a minute, will you? Well... (sighs) I know how you feel. Believe me, I do. But just let me say something. Go ahead. When I was your age, a date with a guy like Al would have been exciting to me, too. But as you grow up, you learn things. Uh Uh-huh. You learn that fellows you pick up at a dance, at a summer resort, who act like big shots like Al, don't run one, two, six with that friend of your brother's or the boy next door. End of sermon. Oh, Ruthie, you're awfully sweet. But don't worry about me, will you? <laughs> oh, that must be Al now. Oh, 
Is Al Benton here? Uh, no. You expect him, don't you? Oh, well, yes. And I'll come in and wait. Well, I... And who's that? I don't know. What? Just the two of you here. What do you want? Al Benton. I told you he isn't here. I'll wait. Now, just a minute. Oh, hey, oh. you... I said I'll wait. In an FBI field office some ten miles from the lake resort, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk. He is waiting, too. Waiting for a call from headquarters in Washington. Jim. Yes, Bob. What do you say about some dinner? No, you go ahead. I'm going to stick around here. Oh, something special? Yes, I'm waiting for a report from Washington. What about? Some fingerprints that I sent down there this morning. Oh. It's on that central bank holder. What's the story? Two men held up the cashier of the bank, took over $8,000. I see. The car they used was found about four hours later across the state line. Uh-huh. What about the two men? One of them is still on the car. Good. Not so good. He was dead, shot through the heart. Yeah. Well, what about the money? No sign of it. Uh, had there been any gunplay in the holdup? No. I believe he was killed by his partner. That's the usual loyalty of one thief to another. Yeah. Any identification? A dead man was named Johnson. At least that was one of his many aliases. Habitual criminal, long record. How about the one that got away? I've got a fair description on him, but I'm hoping for more than that. What do you mean? I picked up some prints in the car on the back of the rearview mirror. They weren't Johnson's. I checked on that. Those are the ones you sent to Washington? Yeah, that's right. Well, Jimmy boy, I wish you luck. Uh, can I bring you back a sandwich? Oh, yes, will you? Ham and cheese on ride. Tastes fine. Okay. Coffee? Right. Anything else? Yes. Identification of those fingerprints. Mister. Yeah? Can I go in the kitchen? What for? I want to make some coffee. Stay where you are. Oh. Look, will you do us one favor? Will you put that gun away? Not till after I use it. Please, what is this all about? I told you I'm waiting for Al. Why? You'll see. You're going to shoot him, aren't you? That's right. Oh, no. Couldn't you pick someplace else? No. Why not? Because I know he's coming here. What time is it? (sighs) Almost 9.15. He was due at 9? Yes. Well, remember what I told you. When he knocks, you answer the door. Ask him right in and don't rumble. Oh, no. I, I can't do it. You'd better, sweetheart, or all of you get it. Would you mind telling us why you want to kill him? No. Well? My brother and Al were partners. They pulled a stick up yesterday. Oh, After they'd done the job, Al knocked my brother off and beat it with the dough. How do you know all this? Grapevine. I even know he's planning a lamb out of town tonight and take this dame here with him. Anne, is that true? Yes. Oh, Oh, but I didn't know anything about this other stuff. Honest, Ruth. Oh, baby, baby. Wait a minute. Don't answer that till I tell you what to do. Oh, but I... If that's Al, tell him to come right over here. And don't give him no office that anything's wrong, understand? Yes. Okay, answer it. Hello? Is that you, Ann? Yes, Al? Look, baby, I got tied up here down at the inn. Let me send a cab up for you, huh? Well, We I... can leave from here. Uh, I'd rather not, Al. Huh? I, I, I'd rather you call for me. Well, it'll be another hour. Well, that's all right. Okay, see you later, honey. Bye. Bye. Is he coming? Yes. That's swell. One combination on rye coming up. Oh, thanks, Bill. And here's your coffee. Good. 
Oh, did anything break? Yes, plenty. A report on those fingerprints came in right after you left. Swell. Were they identified? Yeah. Belonged to a small-time racketeer named Al Benton. Al Benton? Mm-hmm. Hey, that name is familiar. Well, we picked him up for questioning on that liquor hijacking case last year. You remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I dug his picture out, and Williams took it over to the central bank. He just called back. Clerks identified Benton as one of the two bandits. Oh, well, you have been moving. Well, that isn't all. There's more. Yes, I started the quick check on Benton. Found he'd been living in a hotel over on 12th Street. But he'd moved? Yes, over a month ago. They know where he's gone? Well, he didn't leave a forwarding address, but the hotel porter remembered shipping his trunk to an inn out at Lakeside. Hey, that's the summer resort, isn't that's it? That's right. There are only two inns out there, and the first one I called told me that Mr. Al Benton was one of their guests. And all this happened while I was out to dinner? Well, that's the way it goes. You spend endless hours waiting and waiting, and then everything breaks at once. I suppose now you're heading for Lakeside. We're heading for Lakeside. What? You were so interested in the case, Bob, I had you assigned to it. Let's go. Hey, you. Huh? What is it? Sit down. Relax. Are you kidding? Sit down, I said. Okay. Look. Look, I can't stand this much longer than this way. Now, don't you start again. Oh, I can't help it. I, I don't want no tears going when he shows you. Leave her alone, please. What time is it now? 10.15. You should be here. Mister. Yeah? I believe that what you told us about Al killing your brother is true. Uh-huh. Why do you try to settle the score? Turn him over to the police. Let the law settle it for you. I do this my way. Yeah, but... I don't want to hear no more about it. Wait. What's the matter? There's... There's the headlights of a car coming up the hill. That's your private road, ain't it? No other houses on it? No. Okay, this is it. Oh, no. Oh, Shut no. up. Now, listen to me, both of you. When he knocks, Anne here answers the door. He's almost here. Listen, will you? I invite the guy to come right in. I'll take care of the rest. The car's out front. It stopped. Did you hear what I told you? Don't, Did you? Yes, yes. I'll have your girlfriend here with me. If you make the wrong move, it'll be just too bad for her. I'll, I'll do what you say. Quiet. Just a minute. There's no one here. Oh. There's no one out there. What is this? I tell you, nobody's You're there. You're lying. Who's here, Chuck? Huh? <laughs> Lucky I saw him through the window. That's why I come in from the back. Turn in just a moment to tonight's FBI file. Now, our weekly series of questions and answers on education. First question. Do you have to be a college man or woman to be elected to Congress? No, of course not. Yet in both the Senate and the House of Representatives, four out of every five members have attended college. Four out of five, 80 percent. Think that over, father and mother. And then say to yourself, my children are not going to be denied the advantage of a college education. If you're really sincere in that resolution, only a small sum each week invested in an equitable educational fund will do it. Second question, what is an equitable educational fund? It is a life insurance plan that includes these important features. 
The Equitable Educational Fund makes sure that money for education will be ready when your child is ready. If you die, the Educational Fund becomes fully established. If you are totally or permanently disabled, the Educational Fund continues to build up without any further payment. Educational costs are spread out over many years instead of being concentrated in a few. Last question. How much would it cost to send your son or daughter to college? That question is answered in a memorandum recently prepared for Equitable Society representatives. It tells the cost of tuition, board, and lodging in 192 leading American colleges. It summarizes the long-range opportunities open to educated men and women in 29 industries and professions, such as architecture, dentistry, engineering, chemistry, life insurance, social service, Information every parent should have. Your nearest Equitable Society representative will be glad to show his copy to any sincerely interested parent. Call him tomorrow. You'll find him in the phone book under Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Night of Terror. There is little loss to the community when, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI... One hardened criminal does away with another. It is a case of one who lives by the sword, dying by the sword. But it is the business of law enforcement agencies to apprehend the murderer and bring him to the bar of justice. For here in the United States, it is the privilege of no one man to take the life of another. This is not a government of a person by a person and for a person, but of the people, by the people, and for the people. Tonight's file continues back at the lakeside cabin. The gangster who had waited for his intended victim is stretched out on the floor with a bullet through his head. The two terrified girls stand staring at the body. He... He's dead. That's right, baby. Al, you killed him. What else could I do? He was out to get me. Well, I'm calling the police. Now, wait a minute. We've been through enough tonight. Get away from that phone. No, no. Operator. Operator. Get away, I said. Oh, Al. This ain't no time to be calling cops. Well, let's hang up this phone and forget about it. You cheap hoodoo. And make your girlfriend behave, will you? Get out of here, Al. Huh? I said get out. Hey, what is this? We got a date, remember? I found out all about you tonight. What you really are. I don't want any part of it. Well, now, wait, baby. You keep away from me. Okay. Now will you go? Uh-uh. No dice, eh? You're coming with me anyway. Oh, no. Look, baby, you know too many things about me now. You're coming with me, your girlfriend, too. I'll make up my mind what to do with you along the way. That looks like the door to the lobby down there at the end of the porch. Right. I think Lakeside Inn has seen better days. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. Go ahead, Bob. Thanks. Well, this is certainly a busy place. Yes, if you like canaries. Do you suppose they could tell us where the proprietor is? Oh, there's a bell over there on the desk. That might be a help. Come on. Okay. All I did is stop the concert. Well, I'll try again. Coming. Coming. 
Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Are you in charge here? I'm the proprietor, yes. We're special agents of the FBI. Oh. Here are our credentials. Well, why are you here? Well, we'd like to talk to one of your guests, a man named Al Benton. Oh, you're too late. What do you mean? He checked out of here just ten minutes ago. Where'd he go? I don't know, and to be frank with you, I don't care. I was very happy to see him leave. Why? He was a most unsavory person. I felt Did all he have along. a car, he... sir? Yes. Would anyone around here know where he was going? No. I... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yes? I recall something about a girl he was going to meet. What? She lives in one of the cabins on the lake. Do you know her name? No, sir. Do you know which cabin? No, I don't. Where did you get this information? He ordered a taxi to be sent up for her, and then he changed his mind and went himself. Well, if he ordered the cab, he must have told the driver which cabin to go to. Hey, that's right. I'll check with my phone operator. She put in the call. Excuse me, please. Sure. Now, Jim, if he left ten minutes ago, that's not too much of a start. No. We could still nail him at the girl's cabin. That is, if we could find out which cabin it is. That's right. Well, gentlemen, I believe I have the information you've been seeking. Good. The girl's name is Anne Madison. The cabin is less than a mile from here. Can you tell us how to get there? Yes. Follow the road out front as far as you can go. Well, in which direction? Oh, to the left. Thank you. The cabin is on the hill. There's a driveway leading up there. Thank you, sir. Come on, Bob. Stay right here by the car, both of you. I'm dumping this body back here in the bushes. Ruthie. Yeah, honey? Do you think we should try to run away? Uh -uh. Not now. Not here. He's too quick with that gun. We'll never get away from him. Yes, we will. I hope you're right. Oh, Ruthie. Forgive me, please. Oh, for what? Terrible mess. It's all my fault. Look, we'll get out of it some way. I know, but... Shh, shh, shh. I want oh. you both to sit in front with me. Okay. And look, let's get a few things straight before we take off. We'll be passing other cars, other people, maybe cops. Don't try to tip them off about our little party. Or you'll both be sorry. Okay, get in. Go ahead, Anne. All right. Wait a minute. Hmm? A car down there at the foot of the hill just turned in your driveway. A car coming up here? Yeah. Oh, thank heaven. Now, listen, both of you. Wherever it is, I want you to get rid of them fast. I'll hide here in my car. If either one of you blow a whistle, this gun goes off. For Miss Ann Madison. I'm Ann Madison. We're special agents of the FBI. Oh? We were informed that a Mr. Al Benton was on his way up here to see you. Al Benton? That's right. Do you know him? Well, I'm sure she knows him, and he's here. Ruth! What? Look, we've been kicked around enough. If you want Al Benton, he's right. Look out! Anybody hurt? <sighs> no. Is Benton in that car? Yes. Come on, Bob. We don't seem to be gaining on him. I know. If this road would only straighten out, I'd get a shot at one of his tires. I think it does after this bend. I'll try it now. Too high. He's turning left out to the peninsula. Stay with him. I can't even see him now. Wait till we get up over this hill. You know, Jim, if I remember right, there's a fork in the road up ahead. Yes, there it is. And no bend. No. Which turn shall we take? Quick, Jim. Uh, turn right. I still don't see him. Keep going. I have a pretty good hunch this is the road he would take. Is that the municipal airport up ahead? That's it. Hey, look, there's his car now. Turn him to the airport gate. My hunch was right. I figured he'd head for here and try to get a plane out. Uh-huh. Give it everything you've got, Bob. We've got to stop him before he does board a plane. Uh, 
Flight number six, Buffalo, Detroit, Chicago. Yeah, Jack. We're going to have to be pretty careful on this one. Oh, but the guns, you mean? That's right. There's too many people here. Well, look. We... Wait. What? Do you see him? Yes. There he is up there for gate four. Come on. Oh, Bobby's seen us. Yep, he's running through the gate. Let's step on it. Don't you think we should alert the field? We haven't got time. I don't see him. No. Maybe headed for those hangars over there. We couldn't get to them that fast. What do we do, Jim? We can't lose him now. I know, I know. Wait a minute. What? Look out there. There he is, running across the field. Oh, yeah. Look at that fool. There's a plane taking off. He doesn't see it. He's running right across its path. What? Bert, look out! Right into the propeller. Pretty awful. Yes. Well, I'd say the file on Al Benton is closed. The panic flight of Al Benton, which resulted in his violent death, saved the state the trouble of prosecuting him for first degree murder. Your FBI is a business organization, and its business is the apprehension of criminals. The fact that there are 130,000 major crimes committed every month in this country does not indicate any laxity on the part of your FBI. It merely indicates that the same passions that have governed the lives of men down through the years are still vibrant. The same greed the same lust for power, the same love of ill-gotten gain. When man loses those characteristics, crime will disappear from the earth. But until that time, your FBI will continue to operate as it has been operating, as a faithful servant, protector of the American people. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Again, let me remind you to check with your Equitable Society representative about the safest and wisest investment a parent can make for his children, an equitable educational fund. Without obligation, he will show you the Equitable Society's memorandum on the costs of higher education and some of the opportunities it opens. You'll find your Equitable Society representative in the phone book under the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Curious Coin Collector. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is written and produced by Jerry Devine. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Coin Collector on This Is Your FBI. This Sunday marks the end of daylight saving time for those communities that have been observing it. If your community returns to standard time, this is your FBI. will be brought to you next week at exactly the same time you heard it tonight. If your community is now on standard time, tune in one hour later next week. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.